Hello, we're going to derive the obstruction flow meter equation in this video. We're going to do it for a Venturi meter. In this Venturi meter, the inlet is at point one. The inlet has the full pipe diameter and the water level rises in an attached piezometer to H1. And there's another piezometer attached in the throat section at point two and the water level rises there to H2, and the difference between the two piezometer readings is delta H. Let's start with the Bernoulli equation. Our Bernoulli equation is P1 over gamma plus Z1 plus V1 squared over 2G, and that equals P2 over gamma plus Z2 plus V2 squared over 2G. Of course, this assumes that we have an inviscid system with no energy losses. We have a horizontal pipe. So Z1 equals Z2, those can cancel out. Now let's bring pressure to the left-hand side, the pressure terms, P1 over gamma minus P2 over gamma. Wait! P1 over gamma, what does that equal? Ah, H1. And P2 over gamma, what does that equal? H2. So we have H1 minus H2, which we recognize is equal to delta H. Our left-hand side of the equation becomes delta H, and our right-hand side of the equation is V2 squared over 2G minus V1 squared over 2g. We can't go any farther until we introduce the continuity equation and the QAV relationship. Continuity, we can see that the flow rate Q at 1 is equal to the flow rate at 2. Q1 equals QT, and our QAV relationship is area times velocity equals Q. So let's combine those two relationships and write V1 times A1 equals Q equals V2 times A2. And we will solve for V1 and V2. So V1 equals Q over A1 and V2 equals Q over A2. Let's get rid of the V terms and instead substitute the Q terms into our equation that we derived our Bernoulli equation. Delta H equals Q squared over 2GA2 squared minus Q squared over 2G A1 squared. And let's factor out as much as we can. So we can factor out the Q squared and the 2G squared and multiply that by 1 over A2 squared minus 1 over A1 squared and close the brackets. When we deal with algebra, we're allowed to multiply by 1, and we're going to multiply by a2 squared over a2 squared, just the right-hand side. So we get delta h equals q squared over 2g, and we'll put a2 squared down in the denominator, and that gives us 1 minus a2 squared over a1 squared. We're now going to define beta. Beta equals our small diameter, our throat diameter, divided by our pipe diameter, d2 over d1. That implies that our ratio of areas, A2 over A1, equals beta squared. And that implies that the ratio of our areas squared 
if we square both of those, that equals beta to the fourth. We'll now substitute beta to the fourth into our previous equation and get delta H equals Q squared over 2G A2 squared times one minus beta to the fourth. And if we want to express this in terms of velocity, we can say that is equal to V2 squared over 2G, one minus beta to the fourth. Let's now solve for V2, the velocity in the throat. So V2, little bit of algebra, equals one over one minus beta to the fourth, and we multiply by the square root of two G delta H. Now recall, delta H can be replaced by P1 over gamma minus P2 over gamma. You'll sometimes see this equation written in that form, and we can also write this in terms of a flow rate, Q equals A2 over one minus beta to the fourth times the square root of two G delta H. This is fine if we had a flow meter that had absolutely no energy losses, but in reality, we do have energy losses. And how do we handle that? We define the coefficient of discharge, CD. Our coefficient of discharge ranges from zero to one, and it reflects how much energy is lost. The more that energy is lost, the lower that theoretical V2 velocity is, or the theoretical flow rate is. And what we do is we just multiply by CD. Either equation, we multiply by CD, so we get a D rating of the theoretical rating curve. What value do we use for CD? Well, it depends. If we have a Venturi meter or a flow tube, a flow nozzle, Venturi, or a flow nozzle, both of those are very efficient at contracting flow, and our CD value is about 0 0.98. If we have an orifice, very inefficient at contracting flow, so our CD value drops to about 0 0.60. These values remain pretty constant as long as you've got high velocity, relatively large pipes, and low viscosity fluid. In very slow water, those CD values can vary. Well, we're ready to move on. So thanks for listening. Bye-bye.